Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with another episode of Total Breakdown. Another submission through our Discord, the link for which is in the video description below, this one came in from Yellow Tomato Man leading the Beastmen against Fume Lorenzo's Wood Elves. The Beastmen are led by Morgur, alongside a Bray Shaman of the Wild, a Gorbol, three units of Ungor Herd, ranked up to rank 2, two units of Gore Herd with Shields, ranked up to rank 4, three units of Ungor Raiders, ranked up to rank 3, a unit of Harpies, two units of Razor Gore Herd, and a unit of Minotaurs with Great Weapons, ranked up to rank 1. Meanwhile, the Wood Elves are led by a Glade Lord with a Spell Singer with a Lore of Shadows, five units of Eternal Guard, two units of War Dancers with Asrai Spear, and ten units of Glade Guard. As always, we're going to start with a look at deployment. Now, the uh, Beastmen here have a pretty standard main army, a front line of infantry alternating between Ungor Herd and Gore Herds with shields, just alternating to give some uh, varying sort of fighting power in the front line there. Right behind them, we do have the Minotaurs with great weapons and good positioning, allowing them to go in wherever necessary and assist the front line however required. Then, right behind them, we of course have the Ungor Raiders, your standard ranged missile infantry line. And off to the side here, we do have the Gorbul, again able to dive in and support the front line where necessary. Back here to the flank, we have the Razor Gore Herd, and just a little bit uh, different over here, we've got the Harpies using their Vanguard deployment off to the side here, able to come in from the side and harass archers, harass, uh, you know, any stray units that might be just sitting out to the side. So good placement over there, and meanwhile the Wood Elves themselves have a sort of standard deployment as you might expect from uh, this sort of a build. A lot of the, uh, well rather, I guess all of the melee units are used to create sort of a shield up in the front to the sides and to the rear, and then in the center we have all of our ranged units. Nothing too spectacular here, sort of a standard what you can expect from this sort of a build. Now, right off the bat, both armies start moving towards each other. The Beastmen could have actually held back. These Razor Gore Herd could have been pulled off to the side here, and the Harpies should have waited until the Harpies got to about here, and then sent the bulk of the army forward, because you want to try and cut off the ranged fire. If the Harpies were closer, and if the Razor Gore Herd were closer when the lines actually approached each other, a lot of this ranged fire could have actually been mitigated and uh, shut down before it was allowed to fire on the infantry lines. Now I would like to say that it is perfectly a good idea to march your troops everywhere. I've said it countless times, marching rather than running is great for preserving your uh, vigor, but uh, when you're in range, and just quickly there, Morgor gets hit by a arrow of Kronos doing a little bit of damage, uh, but as I was saying, when you get in range, you have to charge right away. If you're not charging, you're going to eat a lot of arrows, and you'll see here, these uh, Minotaurs with great weapons, good targeting there, very high threat unit, and being shot at from all directions, causing a lot of damage. Meanwhile, over here, we do have Okam's Mind Razor going down, and just to note, the magical damage does get added to the ammunition, so the arrows are magical damage, but the extra weapon damage and piercing is just for melee attack, so not not all those factors affecting the archer fire but you will see those guys have given up there on their way out that is what that's the result of focus fire and really when getting in range of uh, of archers you really need to rush in cuz you'll see another unit is dropping there just one volley on these gore herds despite their shield quick to give up meanwhile still marching up really need to charge at this point and the razor gore herd as well really not in position yet but the harpies about to dive in and good move here. They do engage this clump, but right away you'll notice these uh, war dancers dive right in and try to prevent the harpies from causing too much damage. So good move there with the harpies trying to shut down three units of, uh, of glade guard there, but unfortunately they do get surrounded right away and blocked off. And you'll notice over here the Ungor raiders are actually firing at the eternal guard to begin with, and that's not the best call. What's really important to wipe out is this ranged support. If these Ungor raiders and this one unit of Ungor raiders here were firing on some of these archers instead, they would do a tremendous amount of damage, uh, both physically and to morale, and that's what's needed right now, because that support from these range units is going to cause a lot of damage. Now over here we have the Gorbel rushing in as well, uh, running in to actually engage with these guys, and that's not the best call. A couple of things going on here, so first of all, great use of Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma there, right in time to slow that charge down. Beautifully done, and really reduces the amount of damage done by that charge. Apart from that though, the Saigor, as you may have seen just moments ago, uh, dropped a rock in this general area. Now, obviously you want to hit these archers, but there are better targets. You want to hit the clumps, like this one here, or this one here. Better targets for the Saigor to hit than this 
stray unit of uh, of Glade Guard over here. Now off to the side, finally we have the Razor Gore herd charging in, and both of them sent in through this gap. So a little bit of mismanagement there by the Wood Elves should have blocked that gap off. But I would like to say, having both of these Razor Gore herd clump up against one unit, not a good idea. One should have been peeled away. Support this engagement from the rear, or support this engagement, or this engagement, or even drive into some of these archers over here. Again, just avoiding that fire, avoiding that ranged fire that's causing so much morale damage uh, and, and physical damage to the beastmen. On that same note, this Gorbel here really should not have been engaged up front here. Should have just peeled right past and hit some of these Glade Guard or some of these guys over here, just done some damage to this, again, support structure because that's what's causing most of the damage. Meanwhile, in this engagement over here on the Beastmen's right flank and the Wood Elves' left flank, uh, a little bit of clumping going on. These Gore Herd with shield could have been separated if, again, and I've mentioned this in a few of the previous episodes as well, just peeling away and coming in from the rear would make a huge difference. Take care of this engagement a lot faster. Alternatively, peeling away and engaging these Eternal Guard from the rear or peeling away and coming in from the back and hitting some of these Glade Guard. A lot of different uses of these units that are otherwise clumped up. Now, back to full speed. A lot going on in this battle. Uh, so again, you'll notice a lot of these Glade Guard just opening fire into the various melee engagements, providing the support that they can. And that is why they need to be taken out nice and early. Meanwhile, over here, the Razor Gore Herd, one of these units, do get hit by the prey of Anath Rema, holding them in place. And in just a moment, you'll notice the Glade Lord gets off a shot with the Arrow of Kronos and doing a significant amount of damage, all things considered. Meanwhile, that does allow these archers to withdraw and another unit of these War Dancers dive in. And with these spears, on these large units, they will be very quickly taken care of, as you can see happening right now. Now these Ungor herd, again, they just pile in, try to get involved over here, and meanwhile, at the same time, you'll see these Ungor raiders have finally decided to open fire on some of these Glade Guard, and very quickly, you'll see how much damage they do. Big misstep at this point from the Beastmen player. In just a moment, the health of this unit of Glade Guard is going to drop below 20%, and that is the perfect chance to use Morgur's special ability, uh, Spirit Essence of Chaos. Drop it on this unit here, convert them into Chaos Spawn, and that will not only bolster the Beastmen army and remove a unit from the Wood Elf army, it would actually spawn some Chaos Spawn right here, and they could engage one, two, and maybe three units of uh, of these Glade Guard, potentially even push in and engage this entire chunk here in melee. Beyond that, they cause fear, etc. So that's of course very helpful, but a big missed opportunity there because their health right now is approximately below that 20% threshold you need. So just a misstep over there. Now, as we move on, you'll notice those archers continue to fire onto these guys. Meanwhile, over here, this flank is quickly being lost with all this supporting fire. Once again, those archers doing a lot of work here, just taking care of those Razor Gore herd, both of those units on their way out. And, uh, and the next targets are just these Ungor herd and the Gore herds who, despite their shields, can't do much against this much archer fire. Now you'll notice back here, these Ungor raiders are actually giving chase to this retreating unit of Glade Guard until finally, maybe potentially two or three volleys worth of time later, uh, the, the Beastmen do realize and they open fire on this unit of Glade Guard instead and look just how quickly morale and health drop. So, you know, good job once you realize to retarget a ranged unit rather than what could be a tempting melee unit. Uh, unfortunately, this realization is coming maybe far too late. Back here now, we do have the Gorble as well, diving into some of these Glade Guard, trying to cause some damage, but of course, that would have been a lot more helpful earlier on when uh, when these guys were providing support as opposed to being sort of all that's left. A lot of the, or rather almost all of the Beastmen melee has surrendered is and is on the way out. Meanwhile over here another Okam's Mind Razor was supporting these ranged units giving them some magical damage from their missiles and you'll notice now over here the Wood Elves have decided it's time to take care of this missile support that's coming in. On the one hand, we have the War Dancers doing their little anime-style run towards the Gorbel. And on the other hand, we have the Eternal Guard moving in to shut down any range support from these two units. The Saigor, meanwhile, still targeting these units that are in thin lines. Right now, a lot of these archers have 
globbed up, they've squared up, and that makes for beautiful, beautiful target practice for range units, and that includes artillery. A good hit here, a solid hit here, would take care of two units each, or even a hit here would destroy this unit. So it's very important to target your artillery where the enemy is not only clumped up, but also in a uh, square formation. I do have a video and I'll have a little eye at the top right corner. Make sure to watch that video because these squares versus thin lines make a huge difference in combat. Now, back to normal speed again. You'll notice a lot of arrow fire going back and forth everywhere. Morgor still alive, finally converts these unit here, this retreating unit, to chaos spawn. And honestly, that's a little too far away to cause too much damage at this stage of the battle. Really should have been... Uh, one of those earlier archers or even this unit of glade guard back here at this point and just charge them into some of these units over here uh cause a little bit of damage and uh finally the cygor gets a decent hit almost at this glade guard unit but has retargeted onto one of these squared off units the gorbul now as well had the potion of toughness tried to stay intact and unbreakable but unfortunately once that potion has worn off there's nothing else that can be done one more shot coming in from the Saigor, and you'll notice that is a direct hit, does a tremendous amount of damage, and that will unfortunately be the last shot from the Saigor before it finally runs out of health and decides to die and uh, leave the field of battle forever. Meanwhile, the Chaos Spawn here, unfortunately, just slowly marching again. Marching is a good idea, but not in this high-stress situation. Really need to charge them in and again shut down this support structure. Meanwhile, on Morgur, beautiful play here. We have the Prey of Anathrema going down. Morgur has missile resistance, and it's very high missile resistance. That negative 22% missile resistance makes a huge difference. Of course, it helps that Morgur now can't move, but that reduction in missile resistance means all this arrow fire can just pour right in and, well, cause a tremendous amount of damage. Obviously, it would be more if he didn't have missile resistance to begin with, but just beautiful play there, holding him in place, uh, dropping that negative to his resistance, and then firing from all directions. These chaos spawn, not even a concern. Most of the beastmen units are more or less thinned out the herd has been culled none of these guys can stand up against the bulk of the of the wood elves army at this point so really it's all about shutting down morgur getting rid of morgur because he is a very dangerous uh, enemy unit but as you see he has started to give up he is going to leave the field the chaos spawn don't stand much of a chance especially with these uh war dancers with their asrai spear diving in and apart from that it does help to have all this range support raining fire down on the chaos spawn you'll notice in just a handful of seconds these guys do drop they are not able to stand uh, and with that the wood elves are able to defend whatever trees there are on this battlefield an unfortunate loss for the beastmen and a solid victory i suppose for the wood elves now this battle really showcases both the strength and the fragility of ranged units and really the importance of taking them out early Two volleys from the three Ungor Raiders was almost always enough to frighten a unit of otherwise powerful Glade Guard right out of formation and potentially off the field. It also shows just how important it is to keep your character abilities in mind. If Morgur had used the Spirit Essence of Chaos on one of those damaged Glade Guard units early on, not only would it supplement the Beastmen army, it would also have shut down multiple Glade Guard units, and that would potentially change the outcome of the battle. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content and keep submitting your battle replays. I've said it countless times, I think this really is one of the best ways to learn by seeing how other generals command, whether it's to victory or to a loss, and it's always nice to see great battles from the community. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.